What's going on guys? Welcome back to the workbench. I'm Dan and in this video we're going to be covering a heavy weathering job on an exact rail Mopac Union Pacific gondola here. Uh, in the past I've covered uh, weathering projects uh, such as light weathering jobs, uh, showing you guys how I do the techniques for lightly weathered cars. And as you guys know, in the real world today, we have a lot of lightly weathered cars out there. A lot of cars these days are getting repainted, patched up, etc., putting back, uh, getting put back into service, and they're relatively clean. You know, and that's cool. Uh, it's good to model cars like that. Uh, you know, not every car is a rust bucket. However, for the cars that are grimy and dirty, uh, a lot more uh, steps need to be done uh, to achieve certain effects. And so, basically, what I want to show in this video is how I go about weathering one of these uh, Mopac gondolas which is uh, quite rusted up at this point. Uh, I'm going to be showing a lot of interesting techniques, majority of, the majority of which on the interior and the sides of the car and ends as well. I won't be worrying uh, too much about the underbody, we'll just give it a nice light grind coating. Um, of course you guys, if you've uh, watched most of my videos, I've shown plenty of times how I do my trucks and the, the methods are excuse me, pretty much the same. Uh, so I will, I'll, I'll just try to brush over those uh, relatively quickly and just, for, like I said, really focus on the car body itself. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, one more note on this particular car. I am weathering this car off of prototype photos. However, they're not the exact car number. And though the car number itself is rostered and ha there's plenty of pictures of this particular car, they're all at pretty much bad angles. That's the number one problem. Number two, uh, whatever happened between Exact Rail and the prototype itself, when Exact Rail did this car, they must have done it at another time period because the car itself looks nothing like this today. Uh, I cannot find any, photo, any photos that match up to how it looks right now, or, or how it looks compared to the model, is what I was trying to say. Uh, so that kind of leaves me at a point um, where I'm just going to try to weather this off of prototype photos of a sister car. Uh, so. These all pretty much weathered the same, honestly, so it's really the same pretty much weathering job. And um, it should come out just fine, like I said, because they're pretty much the same. Uh, but I'll, like I said, show you guys in detail how I do the methods to do this particular car. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so just like any weathering job I do, I've already prepped this car with a quick, clean, uh, clear coat finish, basically a nice dull coating, uh, just to kind of give it a bit of a, a base uh, for the weathering effects that we do. It's always good to put a clear coat finish of some kind on your cars. Uh, that way, you know, it, it basically provides a good backing, or rather it gives your uh, paint surfacing and everything else basically a tooth to grip to the sides of the car. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now, um, I've been working on making a little bit of an airbrushed mixture and essentially what I want to do is put an entire grime coat on the side of the car to start with. Uh, we're going to be covering the ends, the interior, the sides, uh, all that, and a little bit on the underbody as well. And I'm just going to basically completely cover the sides of the car, as you'll see. And uh, this whole method will make sense when I get around to it, um, but first we're just going to be focusing on actually painting up the sides of the car uh, to, do, to do the grime effects that get... Uh, uh, kind of caught in between the ribs and in these little slots here on the sides on these panels is what we're really going to be trying to focus on here. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I've taken some of my craft acrylic, which as you guys know I like to use the Neat is a brand uh, craft acrylic. Any craft acrylic will work as long as it's not an oil acrylic uh, because I don't recommend that. Uh, I like the water water based acrylics. They work uh, work the best for me. The colors I'm using are earth brown and flat black and I basically have the two colors put in my airbrush canister here and I'm going to mix them together to create a nice grime coat. Uh, and in this particular case I want a grime color that's relatively grimy black. Uh, so I'm really going to mix this together well to start with and I'm just going to add little bits of alcohol to this. I'm using 50% isopropyl alcohol to kind of dilute this off. That way it sprays nicely in the airbrush. So just a little bit at a time until you get it uh, to the consistency you want, which basically you're looking for a consistency of something like skim milk is what you're going for. So I'm just going to keep mixing this. So something like this is pretty much good. And uh, I'll be spraying this at about 30 PSI in my airbrush. And uh, I'll go ahead and get it rigged up here. So I'm using a Pache airbrush, so this is what this is all going to here. We'll go ahead and hook it up and start spraying this under the side of the car. And like I said, I'm not trying to be careful with this. I'm just going to try to quickly cover the sides up here. And I'm going to completely cover them up one little bit at a time. Uh, 
I'm just going to try to get into all these little corners and everything. And I'm not going to all uh, try to build it up in one solid coat. I'm going to do multiple coats to get everything covered up. So after we've uh, basically sprayed the entire car with our grime coat, now what it's tend to do is start taking a lot of it off. And you'll see how this uh, technique works and how it's uh, uh, quite the neat little technique. First I'm going to take a bit of uh, rubbing alcohol here. I got some more 50%. I'm going to take a Q-tip and dunk it off and then remove some of the uh, moisture out of it. And then I'm going to start scrubbing with the paint here. It's also a good point to note that uh, prior I also sprayed some dull coat over this grime. Uh, that way it doesn't lift off as easily. You really have to scrub at this to just get it all off. Uh, that way a little bit stays behind. Because I don't want it all to come off. Uh, I still want some to be left behind. Uh, so basically what happens here is all of this grime that you sprayed on is all worked into the nooks and crannies of this car and it will stay there as you scrub off the uh, grime from all of the uh, exposed areas. So I'm going to basically start working on scrubbing the paint off of these flatter areas uh, but basically it will leave the majority of the grime in these uh, uh, bulged panels here. So I'm just going to keep working it. Now when you get into certain areas like this where it's a little hard, sometimes it helps to have a micro brush standing by. That way you can get in here and start working underneath the grab irons and stuff. And again, it just takes a little bit of patience. And that's the key to the, uh, doing a car like this. Don't try to rush this. Just work it on one little area at a time until it's all scrubbed off. And I'll show you guys in a few seconds what this looks like once it's uh, uh, taken off. So don't forget to also hit up the ends here too. And you just take a Q-tip again with the alcohol and scrub the uh, raised details. The goal of getting the paint in all of these nooks and crannies is so that it's deep in there just like in the prototype and you only take the grime off the, the raised portions of the car. Alright so a quick overview of what we've done. You can see all the grime is in those uh, panels and it's nicely embedded in there. And again, you can do this with a brush as well. I did it with the airbrush in this particular case to save time and kind of speed up the process. Uh, but some guys will take a brush and put different layers of grime in there. Uh, but in this case, this was just a quick way with the airbrush to get that grime in all of the little nooks and crannies in the corners and the ends as well. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start doing some patchwork to the panels here and then once we get all that stuff done we can start doing all of the brush techniques and such on the sides and ends of the car. So now what I'm going to proceed to do is start putting some uh, masking tape on um, the gondola here around the reporting marks and number. I want to model this car as a patched car uh, and generally with these they renumbered them uh, after a certain point in time. Uh, I forget the exact dates but um, for whatever reason they got renumbered. I believe it was because of a number change. Um, but anyways, what we want to do is take some strips of tape and place them underneath the uh, lettering just so we can start doing some paint patching and it'll look nice and clean and neat. You can also put like black decals or black square decals for patching too if they're included in a decal sheet. Uh, but since I'm doing mine uh, by painting them, I'm just going to use the tape. Uh, but just basically I'm just going to start making a little mask and patching all this off. And uh, no secrets here on the patching. I'm just using black acrylic and I'm just carefully outlining the number. And I'm just going to cover everything up in a flat even layer of black. Uh, sometimes you have to use two coats uh, to cover the white lettering all together but just make sure that the coats are very thin if you're going to do it over with paint, especially acrylic. So while I let the paint patches dry, I'm going to go ahead and add an ACI label plate. And generally on these cars, they would take a piece of steel plate and weld it to the side panel uh, to put the ACI placard on. So what I've done is I've fabricated a piece of styrene like this, and I'm going to glue it to the corner panel like this. And we'll uh, line it up here on the panel. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying the decals. And what I have here is a little setting solution. I'll go ahead and apply to the patches now that they've been sealed up. And uh, no magic here. We're just taking the decals and uh, applying these just like we would any other. And I'm using microscale decals from uh, various sheets to do this. So I'm using the stencil lettering 
for the patch itself and then I'll use some numbers from another sheet. So as we keep going here, um, I finished the patchwork, put the decals on. Um, those placards that we installed for the ACI label, I've went ahead and color matched the, to the paint color of the car body, and it's ready for uh, the later weathering steps. I will not be putting an ACI label decal over this, as I want this to look like it's been uh, painted over. Uh, looking at the Union Pacific logo here, you can see that I've already begun uh, fading it down with just a little bit of white acrylic. And for the top portion, the blue Union Pacific uh, section of the uh, shield, I faded it down with just a quick wash over with the white acrylic. And then at the bottom portion where the stripes are for the flag part of the shield, um, I've just painted that completely white. Now what I'm going to do is finish the wash techniques. And generally what happened on these uh, graphics was that they... Uh, faded pretty bad and then the uh, white would generally uh, fade down or basically streak off the logo so what I'm going to do to create this effect is just paint the streaks on for now and then what I'll do is come back with a q-tip and uh, kind of clean these lines up but I'm just going to paint the rough lines real quick to get started Okay, so we've got most of the detail work done on this uh, car so far, and now what I want to do is the main car body weathering, which will be completed with the brush. And I'm using a fine medium brush here, something like this, uh, to do the, the weathering. And I'm mixing my earth brown and my black together, and uh, just gradual mixtures to kind of create a nice earth tone color, uh, similar to what I used on the trucks. Uh, so something like this, and I'm just going to kind of wipe some of the paint off here, and then start applying it uh, just kind of randomly here and there just getting it uh, against the ribs here working at all the little corners and just kinda on the underbody as well just sorta of having the uh, spray effects or the dust kinda of kicking up on the sides of the car and of course working it around these panels and just about everywhere else so like I said just be thorough with this part here on a car like this and just work it in gradual little layers uh, to achieve the effect that you want like I said I'm just gonna really streak this down just here and there and I'm gonna kinda gradually mix some different shades into these panels as well I'll clean the tops of these off like this as I go but I'm gonna try to work some darker grime into these as well as I go along and then just sort of wipe it off uh, the, the very uh, the raised edges of these these panels here so just one little bit at a time, I'll just get these done. So the car is really starting to take shape here, and uh, now what I want to do is take a break. Uh, after we got all the grime done, I want to look at the uh, interior of the car, which we've kind of neglected to this point. Uh, we got the primer weathering in there pretty much, and all of these little panels and everything. And now what I want to do is take a nice, uh, large, flat brush like this, and we're going to do a special grime mixture on the interior. What I have here is now some bright orange with my earth brown, which I'm going to mix together to make my signature uh, gondola interior color, which is basically a fresh rust color mixed in with the grime. And we're going to just mix this together right here on the paper. And I'm going to go ahead and start applying this directly into the interior like this. And then we're going to streak it up like this. Well, remember, once we get into all these little seams and all of these little... Uh, indentations in the sides where we just want to streak this back up like this uh, always keep the strokes vertical so thanks to the magic of editing and saving time um, I've been able to paint the entire gondola interior and this was about two coats of just the acrylic uh, on the interior to give it that bright rusty uh, you know scratched up metal appearance that these guns usually get so what I'm gonna do now uh, we've gotten uh, pretty much all of the acrylic work done uh, I went ahead and did the uh, ends and the underbody as well, which I'll go ahead and show real quick. You can see the uh, the underbody is prepped and ready to go. The wheels and trucks are all weathered. It's a uh, typical manner. You guys know how to do all that. And I got the uh, weathering on the ends just about complete. I still got to do some things there, uh, but uh, we'll come back to that later. Um, but right now what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and seal the car up with dull coat uh, so we can move on to the uh, later steps of chalks and powders. Alrighty, so getting into the dry weathering work, we're going to start with the chalk pestles on the interior of the car that we've just uh, clear coated and uh, gotten ready for the uh, process. <clears throat> and to start, I have uh, a nice orange 
pestle chuck here. And what I like to do generally with my gundles is scrape just a little bit into the interior of the car, like this. Now it generally takes a little bit of chalk to completely coat the entire interior of the car. Uh, so generally, I like to put plenty in there. <clears throat> and I always start and work my way from the first side, then to one end, then the other end, and then the other side, and then I finish off with the floor. <clears throat> so we got enough chalk in here, and I take a nice soft brush like this to spread it around. And then I just start working it around like this. Now, it makes it a little bit more trickier <clears throat> with the uh, these slotted panels here uh, because the chalk will get caught in them. But if a little gets in there, that's okay because generally those are, that's where the rust is going to hide anyways. So kind of leave a little bit in there, but try to still get some of that chalk out of there uh, and just keep working it <clears throat> down the side. Excuse and again, same procedure uh, for the interior. Just shave off a good bit of chalk just to cover up the car uh, the uh, interior once we get that done again take our brush and start working it and you can see how it really does a great job of looking like fresh rust I know the light's kind of not the best here, but you guys will uh, see this in a minute. I'll try to get a close up. You can see how good this looks. So now I got some white pest or uh, some white powder here. This is aim powder, and I like to take a little bit of the white and mix it in to look like some dust mixed in here, just for some color uh, color variation. And again, I'll I'll take a little bit of this and also hit the sides up a bit too with this uh, color. So to finish up the truck frames, I'm going to go ahead and take my brush again and gather a little bit of the white powder, not too much, and I'm just going to rub it up on the uh, truck frame here to represent some dust effects. Just very lightly, not too much. Just again to add some color variation to the truck side frames. And again, I'm going to repeat this for all four side frames. Okay, so I want to do some rust spot effects and uh, some gouges as these gondolas typically get after a few years of service. And I'm going to use my fine tip brush and I'm going to mix just a little bit of my earth brown and my black again together to make a nice dark grime color. And I'm going to sharpen the tip of the brush so that we can make some nice little dots and scratches on the sides here. And if I hold the, the card on its side, what I'll demonstrate here is making these spots which you just paint on one little dot at a time like this and it's again just all about the patience of uh, doing this and then once you paint the larger ones you can add the little streaks to them uh, running down like this And you just add them here and there, going along. And I'm just kind of trying to be a little bit random with this. I'm not basing this off of any prototype photos, though I did look at prototype photos, and these rust dots, uh, they're really prominent on these cars. So I really definitely want to uh, focus on incorporating these to this particular car. Also get them on the... Uh, ribs in a few spots here mix things up a little bit Get a little bit there Let me make the reporting mark and we'll just keep slowly but surely working on the side I'm also going to paint a few dots on the ends as well as we go here but for now like I said I'm just going to focus on getting the dots on these panels just one little bit at a time And you can see 
that it just, in my opinion, it adds a lot more detail to the car. It already looks good, but to paint and take the time to do all the rust spots and everything and the little gouges, it just makes it look ten times more realistic, in my opinion. Alright, so wrapping up this project, I want to go ahead and start doing some mud splatter effects. Uh, a lot of these scrap guns and particular cars like this get a lot of splatter and such on the side, so I'll be using two brushes for this. I have my uh, brush I use for the chalk applications right here. And then I have my stiff bristle brush here, and I'm going to be doing my trusty splatter methods. And I'm going to start by taking a little bit of uh, white and charcoal gray acrylic, and then diluting it with just a little bit of water in a mixing bowl here to the corner. And I'm going to go ahead and start just very carefully splattering some mud just here and there. Not all over the place in this particular car, I just want some mud highlights just here and there like I said and then we'll streak these down okay so two final things on the car sides here you can see I've went ahead and put down the primer patches for the new safety striping the car came with striping on it uh, but I weathered over that on purpose to look like uh, that was old striping placed uh, on the car a while back and it's all rusted over and chipped up so I've put down primer patches for basically the new striping also I've taken the time to do a little bit of custom painting graffiti which I did with a white oil paint pen and you guys already know my technique for doing the graffiti you just basically take shake one of these up and you write on the little tags and uh, I like the paint pen too because the paint when it's, it's applied is pretty much see-through so it looks like some old tagging but you can see I've applied it just in some random spots uh, to add some interest to this side of the car I'll keep the other side blank of graffiti though uh, but now what we're gonna do is apply the safety striping which I have already pre-cut and again I use my reflective safety tape which is already cut and I just place it along the car here like this now what I'm going to end up doing with this is I'll apply the striping and then afterwards uh, put some grime over it uh, just to kind of add another little bit of detail to it to make it look like the striping is uh, starting to kind of rust over like it's not brand new reflective striping like it's been on the car for at least a few years now and now to weather over the new striping we just take put some fresh grime over the striping in the areas where I've already done the streaking uh, before it was there just to kind of match the streak lines up uh, so that it looks like they've uh, started to rust over and corrode and the rust is starting to streak out of them down the side of the car so this is another kind of in my opinion an important effect to do uh, a lot of people when they put the safety striping on the cars they uh, always do it so that it looks brand new or it's you know freshly applied and some cars do have relatively new safety striping however it can look unrealistic at times because a lot of times on cars especially like gondolas where they're always uh, getting beat up you know those sides get bulged out and the stripes get torn or scratched up a lot or they uh, rust over and it's important to model cars where the striping isn't always brand new so that's why I'm trying to break away from the norm with this car and model one where the striping is a little bit beat up but I know it's kind of hard to see but you can see I'm starting to do some of those lines I'll go over this in a little bit more detail later on uh, when we do a close-up of the car in the final shot of this uh, but I'm just going to keep going on with this for now and I'll come back uh, to finish the interior of the gone so the last thing I'm going to do to this car um, is put a scrap metal lathing in the bottom of the floor and in the corners here along the sides um, as you guys know when gondolas uh, usually get unloaded they don't usually remove all of the debris and even if they clean them out there's usually still some remnants left over so in this particular case I have some scrap metal sitting by and I'm gonna take some white glue and I'm gonna get a, just a little bit on this piece of paper in the background that should be excuse me plenty and I'm going to take another brush like this and I'm going to start putting some in the corners here uh, I'm going to try to make a relatively thick layer of paint because I want quite a good uh, substantial build up in the corner here I won't do the whole thing right away I just want to do a little portion at a time just so you guys get the the idea but just put some of this down here real quick and I'll put some in another, just kind of randomly here, random little areas. And once you do that, you can take, zoom in here, your scrap metal, and sprinkle it in like this. I 
and you just want to cover all of the bare areas up. Now, some of you might be tempted to take this right away and flip it over to remove the excess. I don't recommend you do that because even the material that's already in the glue will just fall right out. Uh, it's best to just let this sit for a few hours to let the glue tack up, uh, solidify a little bit, and then you can flip the gondola over and remove the excess material from the interior. So after almost six hours of uh, solid non-stop work, this is what we've come up with. As you can see, it looks very prototypical, it's very nice, all kinds of great effects on this car, uh, all coming together to create one piece, and it just looks uh, absolutely fantastic, very happy with it. You can see we got the trucks nicely weathered, the wheels, everything's done. I love the bleach effects on the logo. We got that uh, ACI patched out uh, stencil plate there, the new safety striping, the panels are nicely rusted out. As you can see, we got all the nice little rust spots and scratches, sorry about that. There you go, you can see all those little scratch effects and such all over the sides. Got a little mud splatter here and there. And then of course the patchwork. Some graffiti here and there. All looks very nice. The interior itself came out very, very nice. I'm very happy with that. Um, and real quick, I'll show you guys the end. Uh, the first end. You can see I've done the scratch effects. We got the grind finished and I got some of the kick-up spray working up there. And then on this side, again you can see this side is the clean side in terms of graffiti. There's no graffiti on this side, it's just uh, all weathering and again you can see the very very nice effects especially all the little rust dots, scratches and little splots of stuff there. It's very very nice, very great. And again the end here and like I said I just uh, really love the UP uh, shields all faded up and bleached like that. It looks very nice, very convincing. Alright guys, so that will wrap up this how-to video. Hopefully it was encouraging and helpful to you in learning some of these techniques. You guys can try these out and apply them to your own methods. And of course experiment with uh, cars of your own and define all the techniques and just practice. And like I said, what I've shown here are my techniques. You guys can learn and take what you want from this video and practice it for yourself. Build onto it hopefully and uh, you'll be able to learn how to weather like this. Uh, like I said, doing cars like this is always fun and the challenge is always what makes these uh, well worth it in the end to see something like this uh, come together. It's just uh, really amazing, very, very cool. So that wraps up this video guys. Hopefully, uh, like I said, uh, you learned something from it. You can build something from this and uh, of course stay tuned for more videos. I'll be posting more here pretty soon. Um, I got a couple more update videos coming of course and I'll be posting those pretty soon as well. Be sure to check out my Facebook page to see some regular updates on projects that I'm doing. You guys can always check out stuff there. I'm always posting pictures of customer projects and of course my own projects. You guys can check that out there. And of course uh, if you like what you see subscribe here on YouTube and uh, keep following for more. So thanks for watching guys as always. Take care.